them, to them who are the call. Watch this. It is working for those who love him who are the called according to his purpose. What's the purpose? Very next verse, verse 29. The very next verse tells us what the purpose is. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. So everything God allows me to go through in life, the good and the bad, is working toward the goal of molding me and shaping me to look just like Jesus. So when I see him, I'll know him because I'll look just like him. Anybody in here want to look like Jesus? And so God, they send the guys over, they come back giants in the land. You are always going to have to face some giants because God wants us to understand that whatever we overcome in life and whatever victories we have, they are victories not because of what we did, but they are victories because of who is on our side. The Bible says, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit said the Lord. I got this job not because I'm smart, not because I'm better than anybody else, but because the Lord opened doors for me that no man could close. Oh, can I get an amen, somebody? And so, they were ready to turn around and go back. Joshua and Caleb come forward and say, hold up. Yes, there are giants in the land. We're not minimizing the problems and the obstacles that we have in life. Jo here, Jacob, Joshua, and Caleb, they acknowledge the fact there are giants in the land. But if God is for us, we are well able to overcome. If God is for me, I can deal with this sickness. If God is for me, I can deal with this illness. If God is for me, it's not about how much money I got in my pocket, but it's about the God I serve who owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Somebody shall glory. But the people, rather than listening to the words of faith that are coming out of the mouths of Joshua and Caleb, they listen to the ten. Now let me share something which I think I said this last week. I know we live in a democracy where the majority usually rules. But just because the majority rules does not always mean the majority is right. Can I get an amen, somebody? And so God becomes angry when these people actually voted against God. They decided we're going back to slavery. I don't know about you, but God done brought me too far to turn around and go back to some of that mess I was in. Can I get an amen? Oh, come on. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about? I mean, I, I listen to folk on TV right now. They be like, man, we're going to have a good time tonight. We're getting drunk. We gonna have... I'm like, drunk? That's a good time? Killing brain cells? That's a good time? Red eyes? That's a good time? Throwing up? That's a good time? not remembering who you was with last night that's a good time see when God brought me out he brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light I can see now anybody in here glad you can see now oh somebody shout glory I mean come on some of us know where we came from walking up in the club thinking we was cool Oh, y'all, you see, y'all, y'all, y'all trying to play me this morning. Y'all know who y'all are. Some of us walked up in there, we were cool. I tried walking there with dog shades on. Can I get an amen? I mean, I wore glasses. I couldn't have shades. I had flip ups. <laughs> flip down, walk in there, you know. You know, thank you, cool. Thank you. Thank you, the man. Don't even realize how dark the place is. <laughs> and, and so, here they were, God was upset with them. And so God says, okay, tell you what. For every day, y'all checked out the land, 40 years in the wilderness. And so they spent 40 days, 40 years, one year for each day. They spent 40 years wandering around in the wilderness, 
trying to get somewhere they could have been in a couple of weeks and so they finally finally now by the time we get to where we are in the Bible in Joshua 45 years have gone by they've and the problem is this during that 45 years God said every one of Joshua and Caleb's generation who did not believe me everybody 20 years and older you will not get into the promised land you will die in the wilderness and the very folk that you talked about oh Moses you brought us out here to kill us and kill our children said you gonna die but your children gonna get in are you hearing me and so 40 years have gone by all of those that generation has died go back to the book of numbers at least 600,000 of them men not counting the women 600,000 men died in the wilderness and so now they cross over into the promised land under the leadership of Joshua Moses even died in the wilderness because he got tired of them folk always complaining always murmuring always coming up with negativity until finally pushed his buttons and he messed up with God anybody in here tired of folk bringing mess in your life <laughs> now the thing you got to be careful of a folk who bring mess is don't let them get you up so upset that they get you messed up can I get an amen somebody they got Moses so messed up that Moses didn't do what God told him to do trying to get back at them it don't pay to be trying to get back at folk because sometimes all you do is end up messing up your stuff and because of that Moses didn't get in Joshua leads them into the promised land five years after getting in the promised land they've conquered a majority of their enemies not all of them because the promised land does not represent heaven the promised land represents victorious Christian living. I'm a child of God, but I still got some wars to fight. I still got some enemies to overcome. Oh, can I get an amen, somebody? I still got some growing to do. I have still got some land to conquer. If it ain't no more than my own habits and my own disposition and my own attitude, I still got a ways to go. Anybody in here know you ain't got that yet? And so, five years after going into the promised land, conquering most of the enemies, but not all of them, Josh, Caleb comes to Joshua and says, Joshua, listen, eh? of our generation, ain't but two of us left, me and you. But I'm coming now to claim a promise that God made me 45 years ago. And I am primed and ready to get what God promised me. Anybody in here primed and ready in 2015 to get what God has promised you? Look at somebody, tell them, it's my time. I don't hear you, tell them again. Say, neighbor, it's my time. One of the first things Caleb would let us know is that you have to know when it is your time because many folk miss out on their blessing because they don't know it's my time touch your neighbor tell them again say neighbor it's my time notice in verse 10 Caleb says something and he says it twice listen to what he says at the very beginning he says and now Behold, the Lord have kept me alive. And look at the very end. And now, lo, I am this day, four score and five years old. When Caleb says, and now, it is the same as saying, the time has finally come for God to make good on his promise to me. Now, the question becomes, how do you know when it is your time well Caleb gives us some idea listen what he said now behold watch this the Lord has kept me alive understand 
through 40, the last 45 years of Caleb's life, he wasn't just getting up every morning, sleep half the day away, do a little workout in the yard, and then go back in the house and go to bed. But when you read Numbers and Deuteronomy, and the first few chapters, and the first 10 chapters of Joshua, Caleb was on the battlefield with Joshua. He was fighting wars under Moses. They fought Ah, king of Bashan, Sihon. They fought others. They fought all the folk that they had to deal with when they got into the promised land. He had to listen to the murmuring that folk were doing and the backbiting and the gossiping that was taking place when Moses was alive. He was there when the rebellion of Korah and Dathan and Abiram took place when they tried to take over from Moses and with Aaron. He was, he was there through the wars. He was there through all the mess that took place in the wilderness. And he says, it's my time. And the way I know it's my time is because everybody else is gone, but I'm still here. Anybody in here glad you still here? Here. Touch your neighbor, tell him I'm still here. I know it's my time because I am still here. God said, Caleb said, God kept me alive these 40 and 5 years. God kept him alive. And there are many of us that God has kept us alive. He's kept us alive through the ups, He kept us alive through the downs. He done kept some of us alive through debt. Some of us he done kept us alive through divorce. Some of us he done kept alive through bereavement. Some of us he done kept alive through sickness. Some of us he done kept us going through unemployment. Some of us he done kept us alive over accidents. Some of us have been betrayed. Some of us have failed. But we can say through it all, I'm still here. Anybody glad to still be here? Touch your neighbor and tell him I'm still here. Through all the mess, I'm still here. Through all the craziness, I'm still here. Through all that stuff, I'm still here. The devil tried to kill me, tried to destroy me, tried to run me crazy, tried to make me lose my mind, tried to take me in depression, but I am still here. Can I get three people to praise him? Cause you're still here. Somebody shout glory. Oh, high five your neighbor. Tell him I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here. Others have gone, but I am. Uh, I'm still here. I know it's my time. Because I'm still here. I know it's my time because I have a word from the Lord. Notice what Caleb said. Verse 10. And now, behold, the Lord have kept me alive. Watch this. As he said, he said, God promised me that he was going to keep me alive through all of this. And I'm here today, not because I've been good, not because I'm better than anybody else, but I'm here today because God kept his word. Oh, somebody better praise him right now. I've got a roof over my head because God kept his word. I've got clothes to wear because God kept his word. I've got a car to drive because God kept his word. And if I ain't got a car to drive, I got legs to walk because God kept his word. And if I ain't got legs to walk, I got a wheelchair I can roll because God kept his word. Anybody in here know God kept his word? I got food on the table because God kept his word. I can still breathe because God kept his word. What Caleb is saying is that for the last 45 years, my life has been in God's hand. See, when I'm in God's hand, you can't do nothing to me. Because Jesus said, all that are in my father's hand, 
no man is able to pluck them out. The devil can try everything he wants, but as long as I'm in God's hand, everything will be all right. <laughs> Caleb ascribes thee in his preservation. Not to good luck. It wasn't because I was lucky. It wasn't because I was more fortunate than anybody else. But it's because God gave his word. That's how I know it's my time. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 11 tells me God's word. The 2015 is my time, baby. How do I know it's my time? Because God said, for I know know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. The NIV translates it this way. For I know the plans I have for you. I know it's my time because God's got a plan for my life. Anybody in here, God got a plan for you. And let me tell you something about the plan. It's a plan to prosper and not to harm me. Plans to give me hope and a future. So I don't care what the devil tries to do to take me out. I shall live and not die because God's got a plan for my life. Anybody know God's got a plan for you? I'm primed and ready. Look at somebody tell them I'm primed and ready. I'm primed and ready. And that means then, not only knowing that it's my time, but it also means then that I have to know what I can do. Can I get an amen, somebody? Listen to what Josh Caleb says in verse 11. In Joshua 14, 11, Caleb says, as yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. Now, at the end of verse 10, listen to what he says. Verse 10, and now, lo, I am this day four score and 85 years old. You have to know what you can do. Notice what Caleb says. He recognizes something. I'm 85 years old. Can I get an amen? amen? No, I'm not 35 anymore. I'm not 40 anymore. I'm not 45 or 50. Somebody shout glory. I know some of you young folks say 50, that kind of old. No, it ain't old. Wait till you get there. Can I get an amen, somebody? I'm 45, ain't 45. Caleb's saying I, I, I'm not 50. I, I know how old I am. I am 85. I am well aware of the normal limitations of a person my age. But let me tell you something. It's not about the normal limitations of a person my age. But it's about the God who has been keeping me. Who has no limitations. And I have come to understand something. That the Lord is the strength of my life so it doesn't matter how old I am as long as God is on my side I am well able anybody know God is on your side <laughs> David said something in Psalms 27 verse 1 and 2 David said the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be?